I don't know. It's been a quick turnaround from last night to get ready for today's practice and really trying to worry about ourselves and then what we can do to clean up, um, you know, for our game on Wednesday, but also being prepared to play on Wednesday. And, um, you know, that's a challenge, I think, for everybody is you want to continue to get better and you want to continue to grow, you know, while you also prepare to win. You know, that's our biggest challenge. Like, you have to learn to have a short memory. Like, you need to have a long memory to remember, like, what you did wrong, how we corrected. But you need to have a short memory in terms of we have to turn right around and get our confidence back and come back and, you know, remember the things we did well and then do those things for a longer stretch and longer period of time. So uh, we're back to work back in the film room, learning through film, and then back on the court, learning through practice and getting more reps. And uh, we have a good team coming in here on Wednesday. Like, you know, people are going to just look at the name, and just automatically assume, like, man, this should be a 20-point win. Well, you're not following college basketball then. You don't know that Wagner was an NCAA tournament team, and they got a whole bunch of those dudes back. And they play. I told our guys last night, you think you're playing hard. Like you're going to see what playing hard looks like on Wednesdays because these dudes play harder than anybody I've ever seen. Um, so it's going to be a major, major test of a team that was picked to win their league and picked to go back to the NCAA tournament. So uh, it's a big time test. We're not ready for it. And like, we'll be sitting here feeling sorry for ourselves again on Thursday. Shit. Hello, how are you? Great. Good. Hey, um, how, how do you prevent, uh, you know, feeling them getting down on themselves at this point? Do you have a sense for maybe the fortitude uh, of this group? Yeah, that's, um, you know, every, I think every group you go through kind of the ebbs and flows of a season. And, you know, I talked about it a little bit last night. You can can be okay with the results when you put everything you got into it and you know we did from a physical standpoint I, I thought there were still things I thought you know still not playing hard enough for a longer stretch of time but the way we prepared like I before I came down here I went to Mike Fairley's office and just talked to him you know because he had the scout and I was like there was nothing that they did that surprised us like in terms of how they scored, like the stuff we went over, how we prepared, you know, nothing. We were ready. Like we were prepared to guard them, and I felt like we did. Then it comes down to individual defense at times. Then it comes down to rebounding. And then you know, sometimes it's just make or miss, and they made. Um, so I feel good about how we prepared um, as a team to defend them. Now we need to clean up a few areas here and there, but if we're going to lay it all out on the line, I'll be okay with that. And I think our guys should be okay with that. Like, nobody likes losing. Like I, have, I hate losing. Like I'm the worst person in the world to be around when we lose. But like, I, I'm okay with the process of getting better. And if we're doing everything possible, then you know you can be okay with the results when you do that. Um, Mike, uh, I don't know if you saw, but Ohio State and LSU are both in the rank of the top 25 now. Um, how do you feel knowing your team took both of those teams to the wire, and how do you get over the hump to take down some of those high-ranked teams? You know, I, I think if our guys look at that and they recognize the effort that it took to be in both of those games, um, you know, that's something that we know that we have to play a certain way to win, you know, we have a small margin for error, right? We, we don't have to play perfect, but we, we have to play really well to beat teams like that. And, um, you know, but we're giving ourselves an opportunity. It's, you know, it's not going to be the last two ranked teams we play. There's going to be a bunch more. 
I, I didn't look. I was asking Nick as we were walking down here. I'm probably pretty sure Michigan State's ranked too, right? I mean, we played them coming up here. Um, you know, pretty soon after Christmas, you know, Indiana. They're probably not ranked, but they're close. You know, Purdue's probably number one in the country, right? And, you know, we got op plenty of opportunity. Wisconsin, like I, I can go down the list. I didn't look at it. I'm just going off the top of my head of you know, figuring out college basketball. But um, we're going to have opportunities to play people. But now we have to learn from what we did in those other games. Well, we have to learn from playing Wagner. We have to learn from playing Cornell. Like, doesn't matter who we play. You have to play a certain way. And I always talk about the standard of how we need to play. And if you play to that standard, you'll have a chance to beat those teams. Uh, Mike, I, I, I think we talked about it a little bit last night with, with John's foul trouble. Um, just generally, I'm curious what you thought of the offense when he wasn't in the game, when he was on the bench there. Yeah, we were... Um, he does so much for us on both ends. That's that's where you start to you know tinker with different things about how we play and what we do. Um, you know, there, we might have to change a little bit when John goes out in terms of what's best for our team at that point in time uh, because of the decision making that he does with the ball in his hand. So um, those are all things where we'll, we'll keep getting better and. and I have to be better as well um, in terms of allowing us to try and get more ball movement early in games. Right. Like, you know, there's opportunities for us to try and attack certain people on the other team, but, like, if we don't start with ball movement, we never get to ball movement. Like, we need to start that way. Um, and that was on me for going to some stuff too early got us out of our flow, got us out of our rhythm, and it kind of stagnated us a little bit. So uh, those are all you know, learning experiences with our team and what we need to do to get better. Uh, I think there were a few key stretches last night uh, down, down the line where yeah. Sam wasn't on the floor. Um, is that a testament to guys like Jalen and Jaheim growing, or was there something else going on there? No, it's just, you know, Tell them, you know, our guys all the time. Like, I'm gonna play the guys that are doing what we're supposed to do at all times, like offensively, defensively, and everything else. So uh, that group had been in earlier in the game, and we had gone on a run. We weren't necessarily scoring during those stretches, but we were really guarding, and the ball was moving. So we weren't having success, but we were playing the right way. We were playing, you know, we had good minutes in those stretches in the middle of the second half. So I decided to just go back to that group late and try and win the game with them. That's that's all it was. Sometimes it's your night, sometimes it's not your night. And when it's not your night, like, celebrate your teammates if they're playing well. And if you do that, you're ready to go back in when that you know, when your number gets called. Not, I don't, I'm not saying like Sam was or wasn't during that time, but it was just, that was his night, you know, or it wasn't his night, I was trying somebody else. And another group was having more success. Like it could flip on Wednesday, like the way Wagner plays, like Sam could have a 30 point game again. I, you know, I'll, let, I'll let those guys decide uh, how we kind of handle things. I'm going to take you back a few years here. When you started coaching at the D3 level, it was sort of the pinnacle of the Grinnell system. And the, the craziness of, of that is sort of like the epitome of I'm the head coach and I can do what I want now. How, how do you evolve your philosophy of basketball now that you ostensibly don't answer to anybody? How do you kind of figure out what your vision of the right way to play is now that you have full control? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great question. Like, uh, kind of over time, um, you know, you take a little bit from each person you work for, uh, but you also take a little bit of stuff that you see. You know? But then not everything fits, right? I can't, can't be like, man, that, that is an awesome way to play. 
I have no idea how to teach it or no idea how to implement it or our guys don't fit it and it doesn't matter like you be the best coach in the world and if your what you want to do doesn't fit your team you need to do what fits your team so that's how you, you have to evolve I think being in the NBA helps you it's helped me understand that you have to evolve quickly and you have to find what works and then stick with that and you know that's still a process for us and our team like there might be things that I think it would be good for our team but over time they're showing me it may not be right so I need to make a change I need to make an adjustment it's hard to do that when you're playing so many games right back to back to back in a week in a couple weeks span but when we have some time uh, you know we'll tweak some things and, and get it to the right fit for this group and then hopefully we start clicking after that. How, how hard is it when you play a lot of games in a row? I know I've, I've heard coaches at different levels say we don't have enough time to practice. You're playing so many games, you might have a change you want to do, but pragmatically you can't just do it overnight because you're not practicing or you know X, Y, or Z. I mean, how hard is it to implement change over the course of a season and maybe you don't have a ton of time to actually do it? Yeah, no, it's hard. I mean, you, you think about, you know, you take this week for instance like we we just played a hard game last night on Sunday uh, but yet we play again on Wednesday uh, but you know John lays his body on the line every single night like Jalen Pickett played 40 minutes last night like I can't come in here and like expect those guys for us to practice for three hours or two hours or like we have to shorten what we do today because physically <clears throat> they need to be ready to go on Wednesday. <clears throat> Sorry. So that takes, you know, you're a day after a game, and then tomorrow's a day before a game. So how much time we spend on the court is really shortened. And then we flip it around. We have to do the same exact thing for Michigan State. So, like, your practice time gets short. Like, we need these breaks. It was funny. I was talking to um, Coach Holtman yesterday in the hallway after a media before I came in here and you know we were just talking about upcoming opponents and what's next and like both of us were like kind of mad that we scheduled games on Wednesday just because you like you want this time to rest like you need this time to rest like before you have to play like another tough Big Ten game like they play they play Wisconsin on Saturday it's going to be a hard fought Big Ten game. Like we play Michigan State on Saturday. It's going to be a hard fought physical Big Ten game. But so is Wednesday. Right? And so we need to get to game day. We need to be fresh for game day. And that's where you see like how your time to tinker and change things it gets cut out a little bit. Daniel, you can have last question. Micah, you, you mentioned Jalen playing 40 minutes. Uh, I think he's averaging more than 36 minutes a game. I mean, how sustainable do you see that and moving forward? I know that you don't go too deep with your rotation, but how do you kind of balance, I guess, Jalen you know, this early in the year with what's coming up later? Yeah, uh, it's, um, you know, you go on based on how he feels. Like, that's the one thing. And we have a great training staff. Our strength and conditioning staff, like they do a great job of, you know, really getting him ready, uh, getting him through. Like, and he's doing a good job of himself. Uh, I talk all the time about the mentality of being a pro. Like everybody in college wants to be a professional player. Uh, what they don't see those guys do is how they take care of their bodies and what they do. So after games, after practice, you know, the, the new stuff that, you know, we were lucky to have with the new training room and the weight room and that stuff being right there next to our locker room, um, all that all that stuff is helping those guys get ready each day. Uh, but you have to take advantage of it, right? You can't, you can't just have a uh, great training room and great training staff and a great weight room and a great weight staff and it, you just walk by the glass and you know, like osmosis or something. It's not a video game where you just walk over top of something and it, like, gives you new life. And you have to actually go in there 
and do some stuff. So um, he does a good job of that, of taking care of himself. John does a good job of that, of taking care of himself. And I think that's how, you know, you watch older guys. Like I was lucky to be around Al Horford. Al Horford's a pro, but he takes care of his body. That's his number one thing. Like your, your best ability is availability. If you're not available, you're not very good. Um, so, you know, those guys continue to do what they're supposed to do. I'll, I'll help manage them in practice and throughout the year so they're rested up and ready to give us their all on game night.